All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to Thursday Throwdown. My name is Dr. Fish, and we have two fantastic uh, matches for you tonight, and two fantastic casters for those matches. We have uh, Heat Shock. Hello, Heat Shock. Hello, excited to be here again. It's been a few weeks, so ready to be back for Thursday Throwdown. Yeah, it, it definitely has been a few weeks. I'm happy to have you back, and we have Nice Jewish Owl. He's been doing a bunch of casting. Um, hello again, friend. Hello, hello, hello. All right. So we have a couple legacy matches tonight, and we're going to start here in the Red Conference um, with Dead Snoot versus Mr. Python. So you guys go ahead and run down the classes. I'm going to check and see whenever I get bands on the match. All right, you want to go over Dead Snoop and what do you expect the classes and decks to be, and then I'll do Python, or does that sound good? Al? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so for Dead Snoop, we see Druid, Mage, Paladin, and Rogue. Um, Paladin, definitely a class that hasn't been showing up as much now, sort of post-nerf and with what the meta is shaped into. Um, and I think it's probably going to end up being the weak point of this lineup. But as far as decks, I would expect to see a, a Clown Druid, Spell Mage, um, Menagerie Paladin, and then either Weapon or Miracle Rogue from Dead Snoop. Right. Um, Druid is definitely a class that we think of gibberling for. But against a Priest and a Warrior and possibly a Combo DH or Miracle Rogue definitely doesn't seem like a strong situation for it so maybe an alternative meanwhile python has demon hunter priest rogue and warrior priest of course one of the powerhouses that we are very familiar with um demon hunter probably going to be either death rattle or combos death rattle very strong at fighting for the board especially against like mage th threatening a lot of face damage and um even Rogue and Paladin can have a hard time clearing those sticky threats, while Combo has cards like Immolation Aura to potentially deal with wide boards from Druid or Rogue. Rogue can be weapons, secrets, or even uh, Miracle, of course, the, probably the best one. Any of those decks would be very strong against most of these, depending on the ban. Weapon could be Mage and Rogue. Miracle could beat up on Druid a little more. And secret maybe to just really punish a paladin, right. and then warrior. Most of the time, we think it's rush. Sometimes could be a control. I think rush is probably more likely here since there's not a priest out of dead snoop. Uh, I agree with that. Um, so I do have the bands from the players, and I don't want to keep them waiting much longer. Mm -hmm. uh, you did. I All remember right. we had some conversation about dead snoop banning rogue and. Well, he has done exactly that, and Mr. Python has banned the Paladin away from Dead Snoop. So, that's a surprise to me. I the Rogue ban making sense to relieve pressure on that Paladin, but the Python ban on the or the Python ban with the Paladin is definitely a shock. I thought that was Dead Snoop's weakest deck, but I guess we'll be excited to see what Python has in store for those other options. Definitely, yeah, I think. With a Paladin ban, I'd probably expect to see an OTK Demon Hunter from Python. I think so. Just because th that's going to be the deck that really benefits from getting rid of that Paladin. I also wouldn't be shocked by a Weapon Rogue or something of that sort. That that makes a little more sense if, if you want to get rid of Paladin. Yeah, does, and... does Control Warrior ever become an option? I, I think you're probably trying to hit Mage a little bit to, to try and do that, but with a Paladin ban, I can kind of stomach it a little more easily. I guess I would definitely consider Control Warrior if you were expecting, like, Miracle Rogue and Token Druid, but because there's a strong potential for Clown Druid and even Weapon Rogue, uh, Control Warrior is going to struggle a little more against both of those, and it's really going to struggle against Mage. Yeah, it would definitely be a gamble. Agreed. Maybe if you try and hit that that token druid, then mm -hmm. I could see it happening. But then if there's, it's hard to target decks effectively in Legacy, because if your opponent sees the target coming, they can dodge it. Yeah, definitely. So 
um both players have started i, I did send them um for those watching on stream mr python will be on the bottom and dead snoop will be on the top and this first match we have is demon hunter versus um mage I think Mage has kind of fallen off a little bit after the latest patch, and Demon Hunter, especially a Death Rattle, can be tricky, but Devolving Missiles is also a good card that Mage is going to try and look for. How do we feel about this turn one studies? I try to usually save that card for a little bit later, once I kind of know what I want, but... I think it... It really depends on the hand. I think in this situation, doing that turn one studies, um, because you're going to be curving two, three, four, if you hit a skull there, you'd be able to get it outcast on turn five. So I think I like the turn one studies play in this situation. Yeah, I guess making sure that you, you're never going to have the skull stranded in this situation, I think that's an important factor to keep in mind there is not an encounter slow in hand for the mage and that's potentially a problem here i i usually play primordial studies on turn one as mage rather than the font of power do you have a preference between those uh it, it's hard to sort of say going in blind into a match i think when you're playing against demon hunter if you're expecting it to be otk I might go with the font because you're going to want to be getting sort of that pressure on board as opposed to studies. But I think if you knew it was death rattle, I probably would have gone for the studies. We had the option for mini mage, a permanent spell damage upgrade for the rest of the game against a lot of decks. But with the fell rattler now an option for demon hunter, it can get dealt with. And I think that's why we saw the Phoenix picked. Speaking of foul rattlers, there's one of them. Right, it would have certainly been bad to play the uh, stealth one health minion here. Now I'm kind of thinking we have to start looking for new cards because this current hand is not very powerful. Lab partner or Thalnos, probably the strongest options. Does not feel the need for card draw once the body. And I think going for the body definitely seems fair in this matchup. I think it's it's often important against a demon hunter. Uh, it's it's hard to sort of play that burn game just because eight eights often close out the game faster than you're going to be able to with your burn. You kind of have to be able to get ahead on board. Yeah. Interesting choice to kill these smaller minions here both times. Probably the flurry or the ice barrier. Flurry do kind of protect this minion. Oh, okay. Not going for either. This glide is outcast, but I think getting the weapon online is a little bit too good to pass up at this time. Uh, this play also just clears off that plus two spell damage. Um, and I think that's that's definitely valid. If we play the weapon next turn, we're using the final swing on turn 8 to go with our Illidari Inquisitor. I think that makes a lot of sense. They just developed the minion anyway. is pretty good here. At this point, I don't expect this 1-2 to be getting attacked. Probably just going to be hitting face for the rest of the game. It's... Oh, man. Yeah, I, I, I think that... The problem with this Oasis Alley is that it's really an easy card to play around. Ironically, the Glide probably helped Mage here, because his hand was so bad. Uh, this hand also looks pretty bad from the Mage, though. It is, but it has a Pexus Blast, which is a notable upgrade. Uh, not when there's a... What oh, is there's it? minions in your deck. In your deck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Easy to forget about that. Um, 
Notably, though, the Demon Hunter doesn't have Illidari oh, Inquisitor in hand. Big anymore. mistake coming out here if he attacks this minion. I think you have to expect what the secret is now. Okay, smart enough to realize that giving a water elemental would be bad. Well, it's either Rigged Fair or it's Oasis Ally, and I don't think you ever take Rigged Fair against Demon Hunter. So no. I think it's, it's pretty easy to guess. I think you need to look for an Ice Barrier here, or you're going to die as the mage. Mirror Entity, Snap Picks. Ice Barrier. Interesting choice. I, I, I wonder if the counter spell could have been good as well for this skull. But certainly can't pass up the barrier. I think you're expecting the 8 8 to come down this turn, so you take the mirror entity to get another one of them. That makes sense. Although you're still dead if the 8 8 comes down, I believe exactly. But there isn't an 8 8, so we don't have to worry about it. This uh, three mana skull could be good the next turn as well. Certainly, the demon hunter has plenty of time to close this out with 27 health remaining. And I assume this is intentional because Mr. Python is a very strong player, but playing around that combustion by putting the stealth in the middle right. makes this turn considerably more awkward for the mage. Although, I think the, playing the 3 5 here would be fine as well. Rather, I mean, certainly Reckless Apprentice not a card you typically need to play around, but oddly kind of okay. Trying to make a four drop minion possibly here. That's a spell from deck, so I think it's safe to guess that it's not going to be, yeah, not going to be a, a mere entity or anything. Probably. Nether Wind or Ice Barrier. Now he knows it's not Ice Barrier, so I'd expect not to see the skull. Going uh, for it anyway. I mean, Outcast Skull is a little too good to pass up, and we do have the 4 3 rush. That is true. We can probably just run into anything that comes out. Although, that's. That, you probably just leave it alone because it's a one attack minion. <laughs> It looks like Dead Snoop also had to pause to read what that card is, because yeah. this is the first time I've ever seen it on a board. Yeah. I don't know if I actually loved the second skull here, because there's already a lot of cards, but I, I think it's fine. I guess just trying to find that 8-8 to end the game. Yeah. This is one of the strongest Reckless Apprentices I think we'll ever see in a standard game. At least when it's not upgraded with Wildfire. When it's upgraded with Wildfire, it can be powerful. But... Hitting several one health minions here. Wind Fury is not, not good at all. Yeah, I think you have to fireball the 2-2, two -two, otherwise you're dead. And right, I don't know how you can fall back into this. Not good. Maybe if um, the Demon Hunter develops into a Flame Strike here and still can't find any damage, that would be how Mage can turn this around, but it's looking harder and harder. Yeah, and Flame Strike's usually just a one of in these decks, so it'd have to be a Flame Strike right off the top here for Dead Snoop. Right. There's a mask. Is that that could be good enough? Kills the stealth minions. Unfortunately the three three and the minions that come out of it can't be dealt with. Yeah. It's going to be exact lethal here, it looks like, even with the ping. Mm -hmm. And I will say, even if we could full clear, I don't think there's any situation where the mage is winning from that spot. No, prob probably not. 
because the, the demon hunter is going to draw one of the Ragnaroses before you're able to kill them. Well, I think Mage is probably going to be the queue again here. Mm -hmm. uh, warrior and Priest left up could be strong. Going to the Druid, I have some questions about this if it's not Clown. And we see it is Clown. Yeah. And looks like it is Rush Warrior from Mr. Python. That's pretty much to be expected. Guess the way to strong card, and Guardian Animals is solid too, but there's no ramp immediately for the Druid, which is very critical. I'd expect to see a mulligan for at least one of these cards to try and find a Grother. Yeah. Okay. The Guardian Animals thrown away. I, I do favor Clown Druid pretty heavily in this matchup. I, I would definitely agree there. I think Rush Warrior, the stats aren't big enough and they don't come down fast enough to really contest what Clown Druid's able to do. Right. Rush Warrior is a, a class that, or a deck that wants to take value trades with the board. And it's not able to do that when the minions are all over for attack, essentially. Well, I don't know how many more beasts we've got in our deck, but. I think we're hoping to not draw guardian animals at this point for the Druid. Interestingly, there's some cards I wouldn't normally put in in Clown Druid. We see this Dreaming Drake and this Teacher's Pet. Um, I definitely Perhaps seen... There's... Go ahead. I was going to say, I've seen uh, Teacher's Pet instead of Moonfang in some lists. Um, it, I think I... Moonfang is pretty incredible if you've buffed it. Just want to throw that out there. But yeah, I... I think that makes sense. I, almost one of the concerns, I think, is that if you're playing against Priest and they're able to copy your Moonfang, you pretty much instantly lose at that point because you don't have a way to deal with it. Um, right. That's it's definitely a legitimate concern going into this sort of matchup. Also, uh, I disenchanted my Moonfang pretty early and haven't felt the need to recraft it, so that's also a possibility. Well, I'm going to make a pitch to look at my pro lineup this week. If you haven't seen it, there's a Moonfang, and it's not in a Druid. Um, interesting choice not to kill the Cleave minion here. I probably would have gone that route. Uh, there's no Broom to punish, though. Ops to drop the teacher's pet over the overgrowth. I think that's probably a sign there's not many beasts left in the I deck. I think so. Uh, if this guardian animals was going to be online, I think ramping into that was critical. But if it's just pulling a Twilight Runner, uh, probably not worth it. Although it did come with a, a free 6-6 six -six in the strongman. Definitely a slightly more complicated turn for the warrior, just deciding whether we want to play the conditioning and then the bumper car, play the bumper car first, or if we want to try and pop the teacher's pet and see what comes out before we do either. It's a lot of options here. It's a very mechanical turn. I don't I don't mind this conditioning at all. Yeah. Just being it, able to it, take that value trade. Yeah. Even though you don't get the one ones, I I don't know that you care about the game going that long. Oh, not killing the cleave minion. I do have some questions there. I think that was important. It seems a little more questionable just because I don't know. We've got our opponent to Ten, but I don't know what the plan to finish out the game from here is. Although... Right, I, I'm not ready to give up the board just yet without any burst damage. This crush could represent some burst damage in the form of a weapon. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit slow. I think this overgrowth not coming down, we're starting to see some, some problems with that line. A whole hand of cards that just can't really be played.
Rush minions are going to go right through this taunt. Taunts don't work too well against uh, against Rush Warrior. They usually can clear them. And we're going to see Crush go in phase for five. So I think we're going to need to roll a good 10 drop off this Primordial Protector if we don't want to die this turn. Right. Col Scrapyard Colossus would do it. I think that's what we're waiting on. Perhaps the is the ten ten. I think is still in standard as well. A bunny with all is oh, found. There we go. And something's targeting face. Troublemaker could be lethal, but it's pretty unlikely. That seems a little ambitious. Um... I think you play it. Although, oh, he might just want to play Watley to try and pick up the Alex. Because the Alex can just go through any taunt boards. I think you have to Watley hero power this turn. Because um, you know your opponent has that survival. You, you take exactly 21 if they play survival next turn. Right. And then Alex is setting up the lethal. Well, the oh, but if you, as long as you bump the crash, you're safe. Because that'll provide 8 armor. Ah, that is true. Also, we didn't draw Alex, which could prove to be somewhat problematic here. I think it's going to be a huge problem. Now I think the board has been completely lost. And we may be either an Alex top deck or a lucky troublemaker in order to win. Be a very lucky troublemaker at this point. Um... Yeah, that would that would be impressive to pull off. Yeah, even ETC won't do it because we don't have enough rushes in hand. I think he's well aware that Nazoth is going not going to fix the problems. And that's gonna be game. The uh plus four, plus four. Essentially, two savage drawers on this board. Um, I really think just not hitting that Alex off of Wally cost, cost the game. It was a 50 50 for the Warrior to win this, it seems. Perhaps even there might have been two 10 Thrashers left. We don't know the exact um, list. That's that's fair. It was the first one generated off of studies. I missed it. I'm not sure. Okay. It wasn't, so he played the first... So there were two choosing to run double tent trashers in this list. I, I think he's going to be pretty frustrated about the, the Scrapyard Colossus preventing him. Yeah, and I think that's that's probably fair. I think the warrior play was generally pretty clean there. Perhaps killing the the Lake Thresher could have allowed him to have a board going into the Primordial turn. And I will say, in all fairness to Death Snoop, that hand with the Druid, just seeing... That was a terrible Druid hand. hand. It's terrible. Awful hand. I think it just shows how good the matchup is for Druid, that it still didn't matter. Um, this is a matchup that is, on the other hand, very good for the Warrior. Right, I think we're going to see the sufficient Octobot come down and then get immediately killed without even discounting anything. Unless he chooses to coin it out here. Coining out either the Ambush or the efficient Octobot makes a lot of sense to me. Does not want to do it. And now this Parade Leader, I think as, as long as you hit a 2-drop with Stage Dive, we'll be able to clear the Octobot. So we'll just play Ambush instead? Um, sure, sure. Gonna, yeah. This is Secret Rogue, which I believe makes it a little better against Rush Warrior. I think it's even worse, personally. I, I, I know that other people may have different opinions, but I feel like the secrets are not going to fix a lot of the problems with the matchup. Um, and perhaps the ability to snowball an early Octobot is probably better with the other builds. Um, I think 
like one seeker in particular, Bamboozle, can definitely make a big difference in this matchup just because it makes things a lot more awkward for the Warrior in terms of sort of taking the value trades on board that Warrior loves to do. Um, ambush can also make things awkward, but uh, Kazakus on curve can make things awkward for pretty much any deck facing down rogue. Right, but I would have. I'm not excited about coining a Kazakus necessarily because. You can't use what you get right away. <laughs> and I think we're going to see the um, the Crab Rider or the Sword Eater just dismantle this. Yeah. Well, Weapon is going to have to go into the 2-3 the Poison. So, I guess if we top deck a Shadow Step, we could play another Kazakus if we feel like it. Or Tenley would be pretty good. Um, Mancrick, Quan Thief also seems like a pretty decent turn. Right, and this is probably the best golem you could ever hope for. Rush copy is is going to really help pull things back, I think. How do you feel about Samuro here? I don't hate it, but I like Rikara Crab Rider a lot more. Yeah, I, I think that's very clean. We could also I don't just mind the conditioning. The, the conditioning makes sense because we haven't seen the spell-based secret yet. And that's a pretty important source of sustainability, I think, in, um, in, in Secret Rogue. If that, if that card isn't drawing anything, it can be tougher. And here are the 5-5. Five, five. This is a good line from Python because it forces him to choose between killing the Rokara and killing the... the um, Parade leader. So the parade leader is going to stick. And I think we play the bumper car first, and then the can. Okay. Just wants the biggest board, biggest yep. things. Say your secret, rogue. Uh, deal with this. I think it's a little bit weak to stunner. Um, we can see that there's not the secret in hand to make it work. Um, but it doesn't give the rogue a lot of time to figure things out. And things are going poorly. This is, this is a very sad Samuro, but it's also a 510. Yeah, it's a 510 that denies Octobot and our opponent's at 7. Right, it's a very dead Octobot. Is... And yeah. we're going to curve into this 10-12 Troublemaker that's just not going to be... Uh, I don't know if it's a revolt. I I would assume that the the out here this Janus is certainly not not an out. Um, the out would have to be like stunner into passage into shadow steps into secret or something that could keep you alive. But yeah, I think. and the rush boy you're dominating the rogue there, as we know it often does. Yeah, I. I wonder if that game would have gone differently if we had seen Coin Octobot on turn one. I think it would but have helped. Definitely very rough. I think it would have rogue. helped. Because in that case, at least it would have triggered and it would have given a mana edge. It, it, turn two, coming down, it would have died. <laughs> because the two or three was already on board. But turn one, it could have worked. Yeah. And, and now we see, we see the priest. Priest uh, is... Um, Probably going to do well. Maybe not against the mage. I'm looking at some of the cards in this, this priest stand. <laughs> yeah, this looks I, like Rally I think priest. that mage has a good chance here, yeah. Uh, devolving missiles in the opening hand against Rally Priest is exceptionally devastating. Yes. I'm... Very intrigued by the rally priest bring. I have a lot of questions about it. Well, I, I flow get on two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, flow on two with the devolving missiles ready for the Sethic is potentially right, backbreaking here. I think that's even worse. It's 
going to make the raised dads even weaker than they already were. Sethic, the other Sethic is very strong, because that, that will help pull things back together. We get to fought for free and choose the best four drop in our hand, which is probably this water elemental. Yep. Arcane Luminary is pretty scary here. I think, yeah, I think Palm Reading has to come down. Probably take the Smite because it's cheap. Like you split definitely seems far too greedy in this situation. I think that Python was hoping to get the 2-5 um, there to cheat some mana. Interesting choice to play more draw here. Uh, especially when we mill our Apexis Blast. <laughs> That's an important card. That Did may come back email? to matter here. Multiple Sethics on the board. Insight, actually, a great pickup here to try and find that 2-5. Um, from the builds of Rally Priest I've seen, I think that might be the only minion left in the deck. Uh, actually, there could be a Samuro, right? Yeah, there's Samuro as well. I've also seen the Lucia, although I don't know that it would make a ton of sense against, against these decks. Probably the Fireball. I, I would have liked to see Dead Snape take a more aggressive line with Burn here. The Apotheosis is present, but taking another Raise Dead is interesting when multiple tiny minions have died. Um, this entire hand is going to be free. And this is probably going to be a turn that's going to go by a little fast for us caster. <laughs> right. <laughs> Lots of spells being played for very cheap and discounting other spells and... I would have liked to pick the uh, seven drop there. Obviously, paying very quickly, playing very quickly, and not having a lot of time to think over the options. But the corrupt was interesting. At this point, I think you want to try and remove the apotheosis, then start trying to push face. Hope that there's not a lot of answers from the priest. A lot of healing. I think it's definitely just a rough situation to be in as the mage because you don't have a clean answer to any of this. Excess Blast would be pretty good here. Hate to say it, but uh, getting rid of this Nazmani. Fireball used instead. I think it's probably necessary. But the other Apotheosis is brutal. I think you just probably wait on that until some more damage has been pushed. There's no reason to get too ahead of yourself. A second Osmani here, probably just going to get played. Yeah. I don't think many people out there will complain about having a hand that costs zero. Certainly not one that gets more dragons just on top. I don't, I don't, I, I think the apotheosis is maybe a mistake here, because I think devolving missiles is the only way you lose. But this is a dominating board, certainly. 
Another fortitude. Alex Straza. Very cheap. And this is just setting up lethal. I think the only option the mage has here is to play this Varden. And the question is, what do we play alongside it? I wonder if this Imprisoned Phoenix came down a turn earlier. Maybe there was an out with um, a Flame Strike or something. Creating a oh, creating a sh the the new three mana card for Mage that destroys all the frozen minions. Yeah. Figuring out a way to do that. That's true. Oh, but this seems like it's completely gone out of control. Yeah. Taking more healing because why not? Well, it's also full clear, so might as well. Yeah, I, I think the smite is probably going to get played. So it, it less healing than we might expect. Uh, to be fair, we're at thirty. We don't need the healing, especially. Oh, we've got a, a three mana Alex coming down as well. Yeah, that that seems balanced. I I'd play Alex for three mana. Probably gonna play the skeletal dragon actually. Yeah, we have to weave in the hero powers, of course. Okay, Apotheosis, because just why not, I guess. I, th I think he's just kind of having fun with it at this point, right? Yeah. Well, the Alex is now zero mana. Well, it's not so going to be, it's, it's just kind of twice from Draconic Studies, so it's actually two mana. Unless he figures out a way to kill it here. Or to, I guess you could have played in, you could play Insight, and that would work, but then you wouldn't get the discount. I don't know that there's a minion left. We're not sure. It, it would just be Samuro if there was. At right. least I'd expect it would just be Samuro. And yeah, I don't, I don't Flame see. Uh, Flame Strike's not remotely close to clearing this. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just too big. Trying to brain freeze his own face to admit defeat. This is, this is lethal, lethal with the lethal shadow board, yeah. So yeah. You to show them the the Alex, a one mana deal aid. I think well, that second Sithic pickup was really what changed the dynamic of how that was going to go. Definitely, yeah. That was certainly a game of Hearthstone, and that we just watched. Yeah, yeah, it was. All right, so I will um this quickly, and then I will ask Mr. Python for so that that was a three one victory for Mr. Python um very well navigated, and as far as how this sort of affects uh playoffs both both of these teams are currently in the top four in red conference um Although Fish definitely needing the points a little more. Yeah. Um, standard THL degenerates probably safe already for playoffs, so they didn't necessarily need to win this match. Uh, but they did, so good for them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fish does have another result in already. Zancat versus Electric Sheep City got oh. the... They they got the win there, so they're picking up some points. But um, hello, Mr. Python. Hey, what's up, guys? Congrats! That was a very exciting game of Miracle Priest. There, I was a little worried Thank after you. you lost this ethic, but managed yeah. to find the other one and just blow things out of control. Yeah, uh, that matchup's kind of hard when they have devolving missiles. I think uh, they full through in the mulligan, so kind of unlucky that they got devolving missiles. But <clears throat> thankfully, I had the other Sethic. 
and I drew the insights pretty early, so I was able to pop off a little bit. Yeah, uh, one thing we were curious about, walk us through your choice to ban Paladin. We had kind of figured that was the weakest of the classes that you were up against, but I mean, you've made, uh, you dismantled at least all of the other ones, so it yeah. worked out. Yeah, I, I think my gut feeling was just like, I can really kind of target the mage a little bit. And um, I figured that they would bring uh, the slower, like, Clown Druid and also uh, Weapon Rogue. So I figured I could make my lineup kind of decent towards that with, like, Rush Warrior, uh, Death Rattle DH, and then Rally Priest was kind of a spicy, uh, spicy choice at the end. Um, so I didn't really want to run into, like, Paladin's board stuff. I figured I could take advantage of, like, the other classes not doing anything on board. And, uh, yeah, that led me to a Paladin van. What, um, was your rogue a weapon rogue then to beat yeah. up on the mage? Yep. Interesting. Yeah, I, I don't think um, the, 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 the rogue ban would have happened against you if he had seen the weapons coming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, I definitely think you had some more diverse options with your classes than, than yeah. you did. Yeah, I had, to, I had to pull out a Rally Priest for this stream, even if I am on mobile. Oh, no. That yeah, was, I, really yeah I, did, I did see that he was on mobile before, uh, before it started. I didn't know yeah, if you swapped. I always play on mobile, though. Oh, okay. I always play on mobile, so I'm used to it. Got that practice. Yeah, my, my phone is too old to run Hearthstone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not as familiar, but yeah. Certain, I remember, certainly, an oh. impressive game of Priest. Uh, I was <laughs> a lot of it was moving a little too fast for us to even catch. Yeah. So I, yeah, it was fun. I I ran the idea past my teammates, and I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna bring Rally Priest." Kind of joking, but nobody really said, "Don't bring Rally Priest." So I was like, "All right, I'm just gonna bring it," and it was one for one. So can't complain. Yeah, I think certainly against Clown Druid and um, a another Weapon Rogue, it would have actually done yeah. better than the normal Priest anyway, so... Yeah, exactly. I agree. Yeah, and you definitely have... I love it. That's the support coming out for both of these players uh, in chat is amazing. You have quite, quite a bunch of fans, but also Dead Snoop did as well, so it was pretty cool to see. For sure. I'll have to go back and see what the chat was saying. Mm -hmm. It's always nice to put on a show for my fans. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sheep and Cord and chat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like the good team. For sure, yeah. I expect nothing less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, when was the last time that Mr. Python lost a game on stream? I know he's just I... won all of I really oh, I think it was when we played, right? In Speedstone? Yeah, it was. And also, I had to come back uh, and do a Legacy match on stream because last time I was on stream playing Legacy, I got completely swept with probably the worst Clown Druid draws ever. Um, so I had to get a little bit of redemption tonight. Well, you certainly did that. And, and, yeah. Yeah. and you did it with a lot of style. <laughs> I really... Yeah. They were, those matches were a blast to watch, for sure. Yeah. Thank you, and thanks for having me on stream. Yeah, yeah. good luck. It looks like you guys are in a good position to playoffs, so yeah. good luck to you guys there as well. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. Well, that was exciting. That was super exciting. We have like 15 minutes or so to fill unless the players start early. I, I've contacted both. Um let them know that they don't have to start on time, but they can start um, if they like. And I'm sure that Geranium or Buse, our next match I'll put up on the screen now, is going to be Gold Conference. It's going to be uh, Buse from Orcs That Smorks and Geranium Battle from Do You Even Tonk. Classes are up on the screen for players. Yeah, I... This is interesting because there, 
is this this also has playoff implications where you even tonk really needs to get as many points as possible this week and try and get into the playoffs i'm not sh gold conference seems to be kind of a big bunch of teams that can possibly make it right i mean from meme dream team to chaos theory we've got four teams that are all absolutely within uh, reaching distance of that fourth spot yeah. I mean what the what the scene or what the um playoffs are really gonna come to is an OYO team is sitting at hundred and twenty two and if the teams that are playing this week are able to get past that, they make playoffs. And if a team falls short of that, then an OYO is gonna squeak in as that last spot. So of course I am rooting for Geranium to lose because I want my team to be able to make playoffs. But yeah. obviously it's certainly I'm gonna be you. Obviously zero bias. I'm rooting for my player. <laughs> I don't. I don't actually get to cast this, but I am obviously pulling for my player in Buse. Um, and and then in general, just good Hearthstone after that. And looking at the this week currently for do you even Tonk? Uh, they're starting off the season, or they're starting off the match, not the season, with um, a loss from Justin against Neji Boston. So. If they want to win this week and squeeze into playoffs, they're going to need to find three wins in the next four matches. And well, I don't think you can go into a match expecting Neji to lose because he is the highest PR player. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say, Justin is, Justin is a Justin worthy is a, foe. He, he certainly is. He certainly is. And he clearly put up a good fight, two to three. And, of course, we have Nails coming in in the two-seat for Orcs that Swarks to play against Turtle. Yeah. So, I think... It's going to be hard for Do You Even Talk at this point just because they need to find wins in those bottom seeds and they're not up against easy opponents in any of these matches. No, but they're about even, at least, or ahead in PR in all three of those bottom seeds. So they could they could put up a win. The question will be they have to get enough points to get over that 122 maybe or to get maybe 120 and some of the other teams above them don't do well. Well, to get above 122, they would just need to get 15 points in the week. So, so I guess a 12-point win would work. Yeah. And with two yeah. points and a loss, that's pretty likely. <laughs> Even with a loss, then, they could make it. You can get 12. You can get 15 points and lose, I think. It'd be really weird. It would be very hard to do. Your opponent would have to win four times to get 16 points. And yeah. if they win four times then you've got a max of 12. So I don't think that works. It out. would have to be, you, you, you lose two, three, two threes, and then you win two, three, two, two, two matches. How many would that be? That would be, um, uh, eight. And then that would be enough, right? No, I guess maybe not. Uh, it's like to get, to get a 15 point loss, it means your opponent would have to get 16 points. So yeah, they would need to get. Okay. I think they'd be Turn one away. I think out. it'd be impossible. Yeah. I think they'd be one point away. No. Is a fifteen point tie possible? Yeah, that, that it, would work. Yeah, that. that that would. That is, I think. Well, the potential. the most points you can get and 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 lose, I think, would be fourteen. Yeah. Because that would be three wins and then three narrow defeats, and that would be a very high scoring match. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I got word that they're gonna start at 8.50, which means they're starting about now. Obviously, us being 10 minutes ahead of, of the uh, of the of the actual stream. Um, so why don't we go ahead and go through the classes for the two players? Um, start with either. So from Geranium, we're seeing Druid, Priest, Shaman, and Warrior. And from Buse, we're singing Demon Hunter, Druid, Shaman, and Warriors. The only difference is Priest versus DH between these two. Yeah, I, I think that um, the Druid more likely to be a clown out of Buse than it is from Geranium, I think. Uh, it, could, it could be either option. And then Shamans... 
shamans, there's a lot of options right now. It seems like the class hasn't really settled between elementals, doom hammers, a mix of both. And then, of course, warrior. Warrior probably going to be a rush warrior. Um, probably from both sides here. Um, yeah, I'm, actually, I, I'm not Buse, sure. Buse could, could do Buse. control, right? I, I could definitely see from Buse, um bringing like Death Rattle, Demon Hunter, Clan Druid, Doom Hammer, Shaman, and Control Warrior, and sort of going for a, a target on the priest. I think he would bring combo DH just over the Death Rattle. I don't know, it's interesting. I, I might play combo DH there because of the Druid. If you ban the Druid and leave up the Shaman, then maybe you play Death Rattle. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, but then combo do you, do you DH really want to be ban Druid and play, Druid. and play Control Warrior? I don't yeah. know about that one. That's fair. Um, I would need to see the stats. From what I remember, I believe Death Rattle Demon Hunter is a little better into Priest, but you definitely sacrifice that um, token Druid matchup heavily. I do feel that Priest might be the strongest class out of what either of these players have. Yeah, and of course... Yeah, I think you could leave it up, but I don't think either player is... I don't think Views is equipped to to target it effectively here. I mean, you have the Control Warrior, but I don't think Shaman is is really there in the matchup, and I don't think Druid and Demon Hunter can get much of an edge. I think one of, one of the big concerns was sort of bringing Shaman just generally to a series like this, is that if Geranium looks at that Shaman and says, oh, he's probably gunning for my Priest, I'll just throw two Oozes in there, and if I draw Ooze, the Shaman's going to lose. Right, and then he put warrior and demon hunter they they also play weapons i don't even think ooze is a tremendous liability here <laughs> yeah I, I can't really speak much to the strategies here besides um maybe thinking about what geranium would ban <laughs> yeah I, i'm interested that's, to see that's something to think about it is yeah um gosh i mean from geranium the the gut sort of says ban warrior ban because warrior? it's sort of the strongest class right now, right. but you have priest, you have your own warrior mirror. I don't know if warrior is that awful for you. Just because druid and shaman, um, they're unfavored, but it's not it's not that unfavored. I think I like the demon hunter ban. Honestly, it's kind of a wild card in what it does. Mm -hmm. And there, I think that it's hard to prepare for both combo and um, death rattles because they require different things in your decks, right? You don't really want to play a Lucia against death rattle demon hunter, and you also really don't. You want don't want to play Lucia token in your deck against, against it either. Else. Yeah, I have yeah, demon hunter ban would definitely make sense. All right, I do have, the, have bands. the bands. Um. Buse has banned Geranium's Priest. And Geranium has banned Buse's Warrior. Oh, so we do I, see the Warrior ban. I think those both made a lot of sense. I don't think either of us thought Shaman or Druid was going to get thrown away there. Even yeah. though they both brought them. Mm -hmm. And I had knowledge of the Priest ban ahead of time. So I obviously can't, couldn't say anything. Yeah, I, I think the Priest is just... It, it's, I think it's the strongest class. And I don't think... That, like the cost of dealing with the priest is is very high. Yeah, that's definitely sort of something we've seen is that there's been a lot of attempts to target priest, and with the move to the sort of um, surprisingly tempo and threat heavy uh, Nazoth priest builds, it's really hard to bring a lineup that's going to be priest consistently three games in a row. Well, I I think you could do it if you had a warlock and you just went all out. But that's just not yeah. these classes aren't going to do it, right? It, yeah, that that I believe that's the idea behind the, the priest ban is just you can't necessarily consist three times on a target. Um, I've seen it happen. I've seen people try it a lot, and the priest just gets through, and you're just like, oh, okay, well, priest got through. Uh, I am going to send the players to start. Um, and I think, especially in legacy, it's even harder to pull off because. If you're bringing priest and you look and you see like warlock, warrior, priest, rogue, you go, huh? I think they're I think they're going for my priest. 
you can put tools in there that are going to make those matchups more yeah. favorable. Exactly. Um, yes. Yeah. All right, so we're going to get into Spectate real soon. We're going to have Buse on the bottom and Geranium Battle on the top, and you two are free to Spectate however you like. Mood Mirror Game 1. What a start. Looks like gibberling from both players. Probably not a surprise with the Priest Man yeah. um, to bring the, the, the token Druid. And I think with, I mean, with the, the Warrior Ban also, it makes more sense. Because Warrior was the only thing that beats it. And I think this is a respectable choice for Game 1 because you want to just make sure you get your points, right? Play your best deck first is a very common plan in, um, in Legacy. I, I will say the, the stats do say that uh, Token Druid is a little unfavored against Aggro Shaman. Uh, but I have seen that. It's still very close to 50%, and when you're playing Token Druid, there's hands you get where even, even Control Priest and Control Warrior aren't going to beat the starts you can't get. Right, but I don't necessarily think I'd want to play the the shaman into um into a warrior. Yeah. Neither player actually has a gibberling, yeah. so it's going to be a slow start from both sides. And neither player has fungal fortunes or glowfly swarm, so it's going to be a lot of probably passing or lackluster uh, boards. Yeah, I expect the studies on one. Oh. Yeah, studies oh. on one, fortunes on two. You Classic. just, well, obviously you were going to always get the fungal fortunes, so <laughs> fixes all of the problems. This gives Naturia the chance to get a little bit of initiative if he goes for the thorn growth sentries here. He might be able to dictate some trades. Yeah, I'd definitely be a little more hesitant without any real sort of follow-up to it, but I do think getting ahead on board definitely useful in this matchup. Was there any merit to playing that Lunar Eclipse? I think I would have been okay with it out of fear of the um, Bloom Arbor up. Uh, at least I, I would have taken more time on that turn either way. I guess you would have to Pride's use Fury the here, coin so. there then. Oh, go ahead. You would have to use the coin there then, right? Because Fungal would go to one. No, you, it, would, it reduces the cost by two, so it's free. Oh. Okay. Um... I think, yeah, definitely going to play Adorable here to try and set up the best Pride's Fury. Pride's Fury is a great card in the Token Druid Mirror because it allows you to dictate the trades because your minions have the health. Oh, you're right. Um, although, being able to go either Bloom or Coin Coin, Lunar plus Arbor up would be very, very strong for I'm not sure I love it here. I think it's fine, but it's a big investment in... Okay. Uh, this is a question mark for me because we're, we're going to mill us something here. This this doesn't seem right. At least you could have played the Lunar Eclipse, right? Yeah, I think we what, definitely what are we doing here? needed to play that. And lunar we're milling our Dibbling. Ah, we would have loved to have that. That, that, that was a big that was a big deal. And now are we coining this Lunar Eclipse? Um, we I think still... you have to. I think you're going to get blown out if you don't. We can still do double coin, bloom, lunar eclipse, arbor up, and I think that's probably what we have yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. Don't want to lose. Uh, I, this just is. This pride's fury is game over. I think. Maybe a glowfly swarm this next turn could pull things back, but even then, it's gonna half of it's gonna die immediately. Yeah, I think... You just play this the cub and you innervate out the pride's fury, right? Mm -hmm. Or you could play Cub and then Power the Wild. That might actually be interesting. And then you can... Oh, there's a Glowfly Swarm. Probably take both. I think you take both. With the, because of the Glowfly Swarm, you get an extra 2-2. Two -two. I decides to just go for the Glowfly. Um, right. I don't mind this. Just this... playing the 1-1 and then... I think this is good because then you get to double Pride's Fury with the Innervate, so I think it's fine. Uh, weirdly, the Glowfly was the weaker card there, if we were only going to take one. 
Um, in a ladder game, I'd probably concede here. Yeah. Well, well you study first and see if you can find something. Yeah. And then you probably. And then you concede, concede here. There's just a lot of buffs and no no things to improve is really the issue. Yeah, I think and yeah, yeah. If we had that Gibberling in hand, I think this it game would have made all the difference. Definitely gone very differently. Um probably just sort of miscounted cards in hand and just snap played the card draw to start the turn. Right. I think the abuse's problem here is just not I mean taking these turns too quickly at the beginning um, and just thinking through all of his options is important. But Beast is taking his time and thinking about this Glowfly Swarm because if some of those minions stick and you get to buff all of them with the Pride Sphere, I think that's even stronger. The downside is that you can hit for uh, 12 here and just set up the lethal. So he may just want to set up the lethal. Yeah. And that's what he's going to do. I don't think... It would have been easy at all to block the lethal. It would have had to involve multiple one twos or something. And, but we can see that there's no way to really deal with this. And there's no card draw, no discovers to dig for anything. I think this is just game over for Bees. Uh, and we uh -oh. get the plus one armor from our hero power. We can't even kill ourselves that turn. Yeah, I think uh, it feels like Buse just played that sort of a little too passively um, in the token Druid Mirror. If you're able to get sort of that first step on board and dictate the trades, you can snowball that into a win really frequently because outside of Lunar Eclipse, there's no real comeback mechanics for the token druid. Right. I mean, your comeback mechanics is making a board that forces your opponent to trade into it at risk of dying. Mm -hmm. That's really the only thing you can do. And if there was a Glowfly Swarm, that probably could have happened. Um, but there wasn't. Yeah. And I could definitely see a different world where... Uh, Muse goes in and then draws the Glowfly the next turn and then loses because Geranium's able to then take the board back, but... Can we talk about how insane this hand is, though, from the Demon Hunter? This is something. Yeah, uh, Boron 2, Boron 3. I, I'm down. I don't know how I feel about just keeping the Fell Rattler. I, I think it's fine. The hand is already good enough, but I would have liked to look more aggressively for something stronger. I don't need. I don't know that you need a rush minion against uh, against shaman. They probably just play weapons and hit you. Maybe if it's elemental and they play a a one a one three or something. Don't, don't know what other death rattles are in the deck. I would assume we also have the three two ooze, the four three, and the three three rush. Um, so I wouldn't have minded looking for so either that tusk piercer for turn one or a more aggressively statted minion. But I think. Probably the concern is that if you don't hit any death rattles, if you hit expensive cards, and then your razor fans not pulling anything, it's a lot better to be getting a free three two than nothing. I think so, but counterpoint is skull would have been the nuts there, even if you hit something expensive. So it would have just been the eight eights. I think that would have been really bad mm -hmm. because the skull would have been outcast. But this is really strong here. This board is just. We can see it's Elemental Shaman, so they need to have the board control, and they're just not going to get it with this opening hand. This curve the, from the Shaman is pretty insane, though. It's very good, but the Fell Rattler being played, and then the... Ooh, I don't like this. I, I guess it does the same thing, essentially. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter on the order. I was gonna play the um, do the play the fell rattle and then pull the razor fan, but I guess it's the same. So I'm confusing myself. Yeah, Gyre Worm is actually pretty good here, but probably not good enough because this renowned performer is gonna come out. Um, I think the renowned performer is 
completely fine though for entry beast because the one ones are going to get killed off by the earth revenant next turn so it lines well, up pretty you, decent with the curve you would have to trade that well he's probably going to trade the, the two one right yeah so you and have then... to trade in the three two or you could play the earth revenant to kill off the three one I, I don't think we're trading this 3-3 three, three into the 3-2. Three, that seems bad. It's going to get really punished here. And maybe maybe he's not thinking about Earth Revenant. That is a bit of a weird one. But it's going to be very mm -hmm. bad. We could also get a free 1-2 if we wanted. Right. I, I, I think that's fine. You'd probably just take it. <laughs> I, I have mixed feelings about this card in the deck because obviously Shaman got a lot of help in the card draw department, but Free one mana one two is still not that exciting. It it feels like it it definitely allows for some snowballs early when you combine it with those one threes. Um, I, I don't yeah. mind it in the deck, even though it when you're bricking, it looks really bad. This hex is going to be brutal. Yeah, denying a card draw. Honestly, having the Earth Elemental to follow it up is going to be even more brutal. Um, probably rush the Fell Saber. Yeah. I'm interested why we didn't trade into the 2 2 Wind Fury, but I guess outside of sort of exactly one of the rush minions there wasn't a good option for the demon hunter there mm -hmm. i keep forgetting that for a minute i thought that was i'm like oh he's why is he why is he trying to kill a deal three damage to this death head cultist yeah. but i forgot that it was actually deal four now they buffed it uh not a card i see every day but these one ones are going to potentially buy a lot of time, protect the face of this demon hunter until Nazoth is available. Um, but Nazoth's not going to pull a lot. I think it's just going to pull it like a quillbore, right? Is there anything else that's died? Uh, the oh, the the the, 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 the rush the thing. Beast, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so we, that's a big pickup. Arid yeah. Stormer allows five damage to be pushed here, and that's going to set up lethal. Wizarder is actually pretty good because it protects your health enough. Um, probably still dead to Fireheart here. At the, oh, uh, oh yeah, well, the Dunk Tank's going to do it. The Dunk Tank's going to do it. Yep, that's, it that's exactly it, lethal. It wouldn't have been lethal. Perhaps with the Fireheart, right? Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of things off of Fireheart that could give you lethal tier. Um, any Rock Biter, any sort of combination of two burn spells. But Dunk Tank gives us a much cleaner lethal. Yeah. I'm always disappointed by the uncorrupted Dunk Tank animation, but it, it, it well, was good enough there to win the game, so. Yeah, it's, it's just the rock. You yeah. have to corrupt it if you want to see the full Dunk Tank going on. I think the the Demon Hunter had a very good curve there, and the Shaman just had a better one. I do think that if we see a similar curve from Demon Hunter, the Warrior won't manage as well. Rush Warrior does not like minions coming out of minions. Bossing Man Crick... Um, it always feels good to have that on turn three, but perhaps looking for the stronger death rattles. Now it's it's up to this warrior sweep. And I am not excited about that when there's a gibberling druid. But at the very least, Views can hopefully put up some points here for his team if he can get this demon hunter through. Uh, this is a, a slightly unfavored matchup for the demon hunter, but definitely one that 
is very winnable with good draws. Right. I think that the hitting those early minions that make minions is really everything. And if you can do that, then I think that it can be tough for uh, Warrior to pull things back in the mid-game before they die to an 8-8. And oh, Ace Hunter Crane is a very powerful card if you've had a board advantage. This is probably not the best Demon Hunter hand, even with this Outcast I Beam, though. Lacking a lot of early pressure. And Alar is not as good against Rush Warrior as it is against Control Decks. Definitely. This is an interesting decision because none of these really line up great with what's in your hand. Um, you maybe take the Stonewall Anchorman because it's the one you play in your deck, but I don't mind Vile Fiend either. Oh, and what a pick up there. Yeah. That was really a critical early game piece here. At this point, the parade leader is not safe to play. I think that was kind of the intention, but probably going to just play this Vile Fiend and then curve into the Nerelux behind that, try and pull things back after the uh, Demon Hunter pu pushes a little bit of early game chip damage. And another great top deck. <laughs> exactly the cards for each mana. Who needs a good starting hand when you just draw a great curve off the top? Right. Parade Leader could potentially clean some things up, but I think it'll be better when there's more mana available, so I'd probably prefer the Narlax. It just... It feels bad as the Warrior to be playing very passively in this situation. It does, but, but. Dream cards are very powerful. Unfortunately, Skull of, Draw Skull of Gul'dan drawn off the top two turns early. Probably just going to see this... Uh, I don't know even know if the Fel Rattler is... Playing the Fel Rattler is helpful. The tempo option is probably playing the Kreen, but I don't know if you want to just play the Kreen for tempo. I it's, it's tough. Better. Because... I like it more than playing the Fell Rattler. Yeah. You definitely have to drop one of your three drops there. I don't know. I mean, the Fell Rattler has no merit to being played, right? Because it just comes out when he kills yeah, this. Yeah, actually, yeah. Now there's no death rattles in hand. I definitely think the playing the Kreen there in order to be able to still have something pop out of these boars might have been a better call. Although, of course, uh, Geranium can't see the hand, so he doesn't know that there's no other death rattles in there. Right. It's certainly scary. Okay. Sword Eater probably coming down. Mm -hmm. We'll see if he's he's not scared enough to go face, I don't think. No. It's not terrible here. Yeah. You could, I, I don't think the Alar is very good. You could play Kreen and that does clear the board, but I don't know that there's going to be anything behind it. What is this? Okay, he's not. Okay, I thought for a minute that he was going to... This is the right order for sure on that attack. Yes. This skull may be a very important tool. Although, Warriors at 16, which is not where they want to be on turn 5. The 8-8s are going to be scary, and Warrior has to figure out how to end the game before two of them come down. Definitely. Parade Leader seems like a good way to start. Um, probably can stick here. Unless an I-Beam comes off the top or something. Can Conditioning Parade Leader coin Bumper Car? And that lets us clear off the... That lets us full clear if we have the knowledge that there's no death rattle in hand for this razor fin to pull. Mm -hmm. If we go in the bumper car here, I think this oh using the dream. 
scared of the death rattle pole, but this does provide some board control. I think we sort of have to play Alar because we're trying to get the skull outcast, but it feels, it feels very so bad. bad. This board. Is Talon better? Not really, but I don't, I don't know what Talon is going to let us do. Vec just being played. The Razor Bore at Death Rattle is actually very good here, Jeez. and the the AOE damage isn't bad itself. Pushing the three there makes this AOE even more problematic. So the three one probably ends up going into this four four. Laughing Sister is probably going to be played. I think not playing it when it's the two mana five seven is probably bad. Um, so then what do we do with that? Perhaps bumpy bumper car in the parade leader? Yeah, I'd expect the Laughing Sister and uh I see we're looking at the sword eater, make sure to attack first. Okay. Yeah, sword eater. Just Laughing going sister. for the maximum pressure, trying to make the demon hunter play more defensive here. I think yeah, I think we play a lar and then I think it's the Talon. I'm I'm kinda scared. Not not personally, but for abuse here. I think the pressure coming down is not super insignificant. There's eight power in the three damage weapon in play. And I think this coin parade this coin troublemaker is going to be backbreaking. Um, coin troublemaker is rough, but I think if you coin troublemaker, then you're you're trading the three two in your weapon into a lar. I think you can just trade the three two, have it hope it hope it hits the lar, and if it doesn't, you did three face damage, and you're pretty happy. Fair, that's fair. Yeah. I think this is also good. You can play the parade leader and, and clear the board, so maybe that's just a better line. Although stage dive could have come out earlier in that turn. Um, did the bumper car corrupt it, or was it already? I think it was already corrupted. It had been in hand for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah this, is, this is very strong. Uh, this is going to need to be a really, really good skull to get out of this one. Yeah. Probably not a possible... No possible skull can fix this problem. I don't know what's in the deck. Uh, we need to switch over to OTKDH really quick and get a crazy. Yeah, board get Noarg, uh, or the the plus two spell damage, and then uh, Immolation Aura. That would clear, and then you would lose to the Troublemaker. <laughs> well, we uh, also get Warblades. We can heal. Better. Right, right, Warblades. Or you get um, you get two Moargs and a Felscream Blast. Okay, Fell Rattler, not terrible. With the Quill Boar, we can clear off some stuff. Quill Boar for health. Fell Rattler to probably kill the Parade Leader. Yeah, and we not are well, not... maybe you can't take that damage. Maybe you just have to run it in like that. We're well, not dead on board, but we're definitely yeah. dead to this Troublemaker. Right. Even the Rokara, I think, is just lethal. Right? You just run it in, and then you just push the damage. Yeah, yeah. We would heal up to 11, and we'd take 12. Uh, I think Troublemaker Lethal is a little classier, though. Yeah. yeah. It's going to wrap things up. Any battle taking a quick victory. Yeah, I think Germania played very clean that entire game. There were, I think there were a lot of good lines. Um, most of the things we talked about, he ended up doing. Maybe I'm a little biased in my own, <laughs> own perspectives, but uh, it worked out. Yeah, I, Geranium's definitely a, a very, very strong player. And 
no distract views either. That was definitely some games where uh, very stumbling with the draws. I think outside of um, sort of the the sort of passive play with the druid the first game, I think it was it was well navigated by views. Just didn't draw the the correct responses to geranium's uh, very proactive plays. Yeah, I I would agree. It just maybe death rattle isn't all it's talked up to be. Um, it certainly hit what it was supposed to do in the early game. And it wasn't enough, right? And that's where we have to ask questions. Um, but I guess Geranium had the right lineup to, to kind of take advantage of it, certainly with the Druid there. And then Shaman and Rush Warrior doing what they needed to do. Yeah, looks like we're going to get Geranium in here for a post-match interview. All right. Hello, hello. Congratulations on the victory. Yeah, I, uh, every, I don't know, every other week I've, I've felt on edge and, and nervous the whole time, and today I just felt calm. Uh, I've been practicing a lot for this, for this match. Uh, I, I think those... I think it showed off. You really had a, a good game plan there, and I think a good approach to how those matchups are won and lost. Yeah, uh... It... This was a high pressure match, uh, too, especially because um, Tonk is going into this down two points and, and needs three wins or to like win a tiebreaker. Sorry, I, I always decompress after every one of my matches. Uh, yeah. But the, um, the, the first game, the, uh, the Spell Druid v. Spell Druid, I, 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 can't, I don't know exactly what was in his hand. Oh, it was um, it was bad. I think yeah. we we all agreed that there was a lot of sloppy things done. I mean, he didn't get the he never had a, a gibberling or a, a um, glowfice form, so he couldn't no. really just make a board. Um, to be fair, he could have had gibberling. He could have had but... gibberling. He could have had gibberling. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I think there was some mistakes there, and he didn't really respect the first developer's advantage in that matchup. And I, I think he really just having the first minion. You, you on turn two, you played your um your development rather than your your draw, and I I think that kind of really dictated the pace of that game. Yeah, um, Thorngrowth Sentries, the uh, the double turtle card at Turtle, um, is really like just the the best card in the in the mirror in the early turns. Um, that was something from many many weeks ago. <laughs> that I got drilled into me. So uh, I'm very glad that I've been practicing spell Druid this this entire series. Like this is this match is just a all of legacy leading up to this type of thing. Uh but yeah, I feel like even if he had the um the five mana make a bunch of, of minions, it was maybe just too late. I don't know if he had ramp in his hand or not. Yeah, he had he had a lot of ramp and a lot of buffs and that was pretty much all the cards. Hmm. Um there was um, a Lunar Eclipse that should have been played and wasn't played on your minions. Um, but, I, I mean, he definitely drew better, but I, I think that you didn't really give him the opportunity. One of the more interesting turns was um, you going for that the uh, Solar Eclipse plus one plus three rather than trying to go a little wider. And, and you, you ended up setting up a lethal that is really hard to stop outside of multiple Thorn Growth Sentries. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, I uh, I know that um, this is maybe a question for the interviewers, but uh, I know that Shoshal, you were going to lambast me this uh, this entire time. I don't know how many opportunities you got. I really didn't see any. I didn't see any sort of misplays that I was would have called out. There were definitely some turns where I saw slightly different lines, but I don't think any of the lines you took in that game were wrong and you definitely seem to be taking your time thinking through the options right i, I think we saw the the uh the the, the, the value of, of time in that matchup because views played a lot faster and i think you took your time and i don't think there were any like sloppy plays at all like there were there were a couple times when i might have taken a different line but there was nothing sloppy <sighs> okay i mean i almost missed lethal uh in the in the shaman versus 
Demon Hunter game. But, you know, that, uh, we won't think about that. Yeah, I mean, you were so far ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, if, you had, if you hadn't played the Dunk Tank, we were talking about... Um, there were You could have played the... Uh, the seven eight and the the portal and that would have won the game too or you could have just looked for lethal with the three three he had just he didn't have the life to work with at that point which was really impressive considering he curved two mana death rattle and a three mana death rattle yeah uh double tunnel throwing just better yeah the the two mana three two um came out on turn two both games uh but I think just ran out of death rattles in hand um, towards the mid game. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, uh, it wasn't the perfect draw. Definitely not. They didn't have the the weapon, and he didn't really have a, a great chain going. But I, I definitely think he had a respect, strong early game into stuff happening in the mid game, and it really just didn't work. Yeah. I mean, I was I was impressed by the Elemental Shaman. I mean, there's a lot of cards in there that I kind of wrote off, but just playing Arena kind of worked. Yeah, uh, I studied the the types of decks that he could have brought a lot, and just tempo uh, won out against the the sort of aggressive strategies that I thought he was going to bring. Um, so I think this was yeah, maybe maybe one in the lineup, but but. Skipping past the the match, um, I do want to uh, to point out that this is like a <laughs> going into playoffs week. This is incredibly important. Every single every single point that that Tonk can get. So I'm really looking forward to uh, to, to the last three matches of this because after Justin lost to Neji, it's not <laughs> it's not looking too great for us. Well, J- Justin's a good player, but Neji is the, the I mean. To technically the best if you look at the PR. Yeah. Um, and I think that your three through five is is pretty strong. I mean, not many teams have a 400 PR three seed, right? That's got to be uh, a little well, bit unusual. Use does. Um, Mr. Shell used to be a three seed. I, I, I'd have to. I'd have to look I, at I all started the as a four seed this season. <laughs> yeah. Maybe there just aren't too many 300 PR players, but. Um, People are scamming the PRs this uh, this yeah. season. Looks like yeah. Jester is 450 and is still yep. the three seed. That, yeah. Uh, what is it? Jester and I are the only people who have beaten you so far. Uh, yeah, and and both of you are on a pro team, and both of you uh, made it onto the to the power player rankings. Uh, I, like we're we're all up at the at the top of our seeds. Three seeds are, are strong this season. I think for it's, sure, in it's gold. a big uh, impact by um, there's just not a lot of people in the mid area. Like it seems like teams are getting more and more skewed towards top and bottom, and less like 200 PR players and 300 PR players are a little more uncommon than it felt like they were a year ago for me. But, well, I think a lot of it is teams are sort of when you're building a team, you're going to go with people who have known performances, mm-hmm. and if you give it enough time. Um, players who are good are going to rise in PR, and players who are bad are going to, not necessarily bad, but players who are losing matches are going to lower in PR. And, you know, new players, I think almost everyone coming in is somewhere around 340. Um, so, right, but you would think that there would be a bell curve, right? <laughs> like there would be an average player. That's typically uh, how skill distributions work, right? It just doesn't yeah. seem like it happened that way. Anyway, uh, back to the match. Um, congrats on that. Yeah, I guess uh, good luck to you guys in the in the playoffs. Well, if you can make it, I mean, you need to win you know, this week. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, I think I believe in you guys. I, I think uh, ha- having um, I think having a, a a win here is a big deal, and certainly a three zero win is even better so yeah i mean honestly i think it's really gonna it's probably gonna come down to kenu versus mojo pal i we're sort of taking the job of, of tavern talk right now but since that wasn't streamed i guess we might have to uh, <laughs> the video will be put out soon yeah but i i think getting getting this one here can definitely give a bit more leeway across your other seeds because 
You need uh, a 12 point victory if you want to make playoffs. 12 yeah. points. That's that's nothing, right? That's I, not too um, bad. Well, we're halfway there. Yeah, yeah, you got five. I I calced it uh pretty stringently. If if Roof wins in the five seed, which um it, it's you know based on win rate is sort of predicted, uh, and he only allows uh one win, then uh it becomes something where we can still lose if Turtle can get one or two wins and Kanu can get. Uh, one or two wins, three wins combined. Um, but, you know, against Nails, I'm not super sure that we can rely on that. So I'm really looking forward to uh, to, to Kanu versus Mojo Powell. Yeah, Nails is really good, and certainly not even in the one seed. Very few people are in that position. But I guess with Neji on your team, it happens that way. Yeah, I I just say if if I was turtle, I'd I'd be a little scared. <laughs> you know, going into my match and going, oh man, I'm up against Lotus Knight. Oh, he's getting subbed out. Oh, I'm against Nails instead. Uh huh. <laughs> Navi position I'd want to be in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys very much for for streaming this uh, Thursday Throwdown. Is always great to watch. Um, and Everyone in chat, everyone who, who comes and watches, uh, and and you guys streamers for, for putting on these matches, it's all great entertainment, great uh, thought to uh, to to look over and learn. So, thank you very much. Well, th thanks for playing. Yeah, okay, man, thanks for playing. Uh, I'm gonna. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> You don't have to stay here perpetually if you have things yeah. to do. But uh, uh, thank you for stopping by for the interview. No, thank you guys very much for uh, for interviewing me. Um, uh, nice shell. Sorry, sorry, Milo. If we uh, if we kick you out of playoff team standings, Hot Zilfs could still let you guys in. Um, but that's just how just how it's going to go, I guess. Uh, I'm going to head out for the night though, and have a good night. Have a good one. All right. That is all the matches we have for tonight. Um, so obviously I want to thank all the players, Geranium Battle Abuse, Mr. Python, and um Dead Snoop123 for coming on stream tonight. Um I want to thank Heat Shock and Nice and Nice Jewish Owl for commentating. Um you guys did a fantastic job and and the plays players were all really good as well. Um, and as you see on our screen, we have our donation bar, all, um, monetary donations, like, you have to go through the donation bar in the link down below in the, uh, panels, as well as, um, uh, bits, subs, um, and merch sales will all be going toward the Trevor Project to support, uh, THL, uh, supporting Pride Month. Um, so, definitely... Um, if you have anything to spare, it doesn't have to be a whole lot. Um, it'd be great for um, you all to help us reach our goal. We have that thousand dollar donation goal. It'd be really cool to meet it. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, have a fantastic rest of your evening. We will be back tomorrow with a full slate on Friday Night Fights with Corden and Saku, bringing you all the action. Um, and uh, I guess have a fantastic night, everybody. Have a good night.